32 babies, 32 drug-free babies have been born to drug court participants in Lancaster County alone since 2005. Good afternoon, my name is Dave Ashworth and I have the privilege of serving <clears throat> as the drug court judge in Lancaster County. I'd like to challenge you to address an issue, an issue that affects all of you and you probably don't even know it. The issue of drug addiction. How do we, as a society, choose to address people who commit crimes time and time and time again, that's recidivism, because of a drug addiction, relatively minor crimes? Do we warehouse them? Do we build more prisons and simply put them away because we don't know what to do with them? Or do we choose to address the underlying issue? That's the exact issue confronting a judge in Florida in 1989. He kept seeing the same people time and time again for relatively minor crimes, and because of those offenses, he, they would get arrested, they'd come in front of him, they'd go to jail, they'd get out of jail, and because of their addiction, they would continue to commit crimes, typically property crimes, just to get drugs. They'd get arrested again, they'd go back to jail, and he kept seeing that time and time again. Finally, he realized over the years, we have to either build more prisons and just put these people away and forget about them. Or we have to address the underlying issue, the issue of drug addiction. Because if we did away with sex, drugs, and alcohol, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> He'd realize that. He realized that. He's, he realized that we can't just keep warehousing people. We have to figure out why are they doing these. I'm not talking about violent offenses. I'm not talking about sex offenses. I'm talking about typically credit card fraud, retail theft, relatively minor offenses because of an addiction to get money to buy drugs. In 1989, the first drug court was born. There are now over 3,000 drug courts nationwide. We started our drug court here in Lancaster in 2005. And for the last 10 years, we've been dealing with people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They want to get their lives back on track, but they don't know how. So what is a drug court? It is a court-run treatment program, an in-your-face type of program. Think of a boot camp without calisthenics. It's a program that gives people the tools who want to get clean and sober, the tools necessary to stay clean and sober, and to get their lives back, get their families back. It is not a hug-a-thug program. It's not a warm, fuzzy program where we coddle criminals, and we do not sit around a campfire and sing kumbaya. It is an in-your-face aggressive program. In fact, <clears throat> most of the people who apply for drug court realize that drug court is much harder than simply doing time in jail. You have to want to be successful in this program. You have to want to get clean and sober. You have to want to get the life back that maybe you had or maybe you've never had. So it's a voluntary program. We don't force anybody into drug court. They have to fill out an application, and it's for high-risk, high-need people. I don't like this phrase, but it's not for the recreational user. It's for people who have hit their bottom, people who really want to get their lives back on track. And they realize that it's a lot harder to go into this program. It takes at least a year, sometimes a lot longer. It's a four-phase program, and we address the underlying issue, the addiction. And we've had a huge increase in heroin addictions, typically from people who started with OxyContin. People take responsibility for, this crime, for their crimes. Again, this is not a program where we're trying to make these people feel warm and fuzzy. This is a program for people to get clean and sober, take responsibility for their actions, and move on with their lives. The difference between drug court and the traditional court. In the traditional court, it is event-oriented. Nothing happens until somebody commits a crime. They're arrested, they ultimately end up in front of a judge. And the judge is neutral in those proceedings. The, the judge says, okay, you are taking responsibility for your actions, you're either going on probation or you're going to jail. In drug court, a drug court judge is not neutral. It's behavior, event, process oriented. We want people to change their behavior. Why are you here? Why are you committing these crimes? It's because of your addiction. Well, let's get serious about it. Let's do something about the addiction. The way a person takes responsibility for their offenses, their crimes in drug court, is they change their behavior. They stop that revolving door of recidivism. They don't come back again because they've committed another crime. They get their lives back. The purpose of drug court is very simple. It's to improve public safety. If people aren't committing crimes, safety is improved. 
It restores the lives of the offenders. They get their lives back. They get their kids back. They get to become productive members of the community. But perhaps most importantly, particularly here in Lancaster County, is it saves money. This was not going to fly in Lancaster County unless it saved money and it was tough on crime. We got, we got the first approval from the Chiefs of Police Association. The district attorney is behind this. It costs approximately $13,000 a year to keep somebody in jail in Lancaster County. Three to $4,000, depending on the needs, for somebody to be in drug court. It is a mistake to think that people in drug court or people with addictions come from one segment of our society. We have people from all walks of life. Our very first graduate was an accountant. And at the time she was arrested forging prescriptions, she was doing almost 20 Oxycontin a day. Nine years later, she's clean and sober. She kept her license because if you complete drug court, the crime that brings you into drug court is dismissed. Her record is expunged. She kept her license, and she's still practicing today. In order to come into drug court, you have to fill out an application. And we have a drug court team, and that is critical. We have a, a, an assistant public defender, an assistant district attorney. We have professionals from the mental health world. We have professionals from the drug and alcohol counseling world. We actually have a police officer on our team. All of us get together and we review an application. The district attorney decides whether or not the crimes qualify for our program. And then they bring the, pro the application in. And it's not for people who are trying to avoid prison. Drug court is for people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired and want to get clean and sober. It's not for the drug dealer who's trying to find a cheap way out or a quick way out of jail. We've had a couple of those. They don't last very long. Because it's too much work. It's too hard. You have to commit a crime that is related to your substance abuse. It doesn't have to be a drug possession crime. But your addiction has to have had some impact or reason for your offense. You have to be at least 18 years of, of age, and you uh, have to be a Lancaster County resident. Our youngest was 18. Our oldest participant was 65. And it's voluntary. Nobody forces you to come into drug court. You have to want to be there. And unfortunately, does this work for everybody? No. Not everybody is ready to get clean and sober, but the people who are are incredibly serious and incredibly possessive about the program and incredibly possessive about their behavior and the behavior of others. As I said, not everybody is eligible. We don't take violent offenses. We don't take sex offenses. And there are some other offenses that are dealt with in other, in other ways. So the process. You fill out an application. It comes before the team. We review the application. If the person qualifies, remember, high risk, high need people. We don't cherry pick. We're not looking for the Fortune 500 person. We're not doing it for our statistics. We want people who really need the services because we have limited resources. They come in front of um, the, the team. We review the application. If they qualify, they then come in front of a judge and they plead guilty to the charge. And they're off to the races. Four phases, at least a year. People without an addiction would have an, an incredibly difficult time completing this program. Four phases, you have to go to a counseling, you have to go to NA or AA meetings or an equivalent, you have to meet with your probation officer, you have to observe urine tests, perhaps daily. You have to see your probation officer, you have to do all of these things, and you have to live your life. You're out, you're, you expect to, you're expected to get a job, further your education, it's a lot of work. If they are successful, we have a graduation, much like high school or college. We make a big deal out of our graduation. The typical Tuesday, we have a team meeting in the morning. We review all of the applications and the status of the participants. That's what we call the people in the program. We review their status from week to week. In the afternoon, they come in front of me. That's where all the fireworks start. That's where it's fun, frankly. This is probably the most rewarding thing I do as a judge. I handle all other kinds of cases, but this is the most rewarding thing because I see people's lives changed. We have probably 70 or 80 people, participants, in the courtroom at one time, and it is, the group dynamic is incredible. That's what works, far more than anything I would say. We had a participant one time who knew she was going to be sanctioned because she had violated some of the rules. And she collapsed in the on the floor in a very dramatic fashion. And before I had a chance to say a word, all of the other participants said, ah, shut up and stand up and stop giving the judge a hard time. She sprang right to her feet as if nothing happened. <laughs> that was far more important. The peer pressure of other addicts who were wanting to get clean and sober, who were not going to put up with her BS, that was far more important than anything I could have said. And it works. 
program works on sanctions and incentives, a carrot and a stick. People do well, they are provided with incentives. People do poorly, they are sanctioned. What we've learned, remarkably, is that going to jail for 48 hours is far more of a punishment than going for 30 days. Why? Well, because if you go for 48 hours, it really disrupts your life. You may lose your job. Your significant other certainly is going to be ticked off. 30 days, three hots and a cot. You're, at, you're in prison, it's a vacation. You can chill. So we use prison as a, as a sanction sparingly. We have writing uh, samples, we have writing essays, we have things that we require people to do. And the self-esteem, the rebuilding of self-esteem is incredibly important. Most of the people in our program have very low self-esteem. And by the end of the program, they are new people. We have a graduation ceremony. As I said, with all the pomp and circumstance, we probably have two or 300 people attend at any given time, and it is open to the public. Please come. We have family and friends, and perhaps the most important thing, we have a speaker, but each graduate has an opportunity to get up and speak. They tell their story sometimes. The one I will never forget is we had a woman in our program, she could have been a cheerleader at a local high school. She didn't say much during the entire program, the entire time she was in our program. And we fully expected at the time at graduation for her to get up and say, thank you, sit down. But she didn't. She told us her story. But before she did, she said, I want to thank Drug Court for saving my life. And we hear that all the time. But she said, no, really. It saved my life. I was sitting in my apartment by myself one night, and I had a Drug Court application in one hand, and I had a loaded pistol in the other and I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. Today, she's clean and sober. She comes to, to speak to the students at FNM, where I teach, and she shares her story. She shares the hope of getting clean and sober. She shares the hope of drug court. After the commencement, the charges are dismissed if they successfully complete the program. Not all the charges in the past, perhaps, but we have many people in the program, this is their first time. Without drug court, the national statistics suggest that 60% of all offenders, after a two-year period, re-offend. In Lancaster County, two years after successfully completing our drug court, we have a 13% recidivism rate. 28% nationwide. It works. Is it worth the effort? Well. I think you'd have to ask the 133 graduates to date, their family and their friends. Perhaps more importantly, we should ask the 32 totally clean drug court babies. Thank you.